All right, all right, back to work, back to work. FOMC is behind us. Jay Powell has spoken, and boy, oh boy, the markets certainly reacted this afternoon. Some big moves down. But did you listen to Powell today? If you listen to the press conference this afternoon, there was one thing that Jay Powell said that, in my opinion, kind of tips us off to where the best trades, the best strategy to trade tomorrow morning. I'll talk about why I say that tonight. Most importantly, my favorite strategy to trade the reaction to what he said this afternoon. And by the time we're done tonight, you will have an easy roadmap to know exactly where they found the best winning trades on Thursday morning. Now, before we jump in and cover all my favorite trades, my favorite strategy for tomorrow, make sure you subscribe to our channel. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video, so hit that subscribe button. And if you guys enjoyed these lessons, if you like these videos, do me a favor tonight, will you? Hit that like button for me. Give me a shout out down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for tuning in, supporting the channel, but enough of the intro. Get the intro out of the way here. We got some more trades to find tomorrow. Boy, always excited that day after the FOMC announcement. Now, charts are all ready to go in front of me, as you can see here. Got the NASDAQ and the triple Qs. I got the E-mini and the SPY. Both the S&P and the NASDAQ are still bullish overall. S&P, of course, is that big pop-up. We're down at some key levels of support right now on the S&P. We're right around the low of that channel. We're right below that prior swing. We got a beautiful pendulum swing coming off of that high. But I'll tell you though, there's this there's something there's something about that move down. There's something about that move down that kind of draws my attention. We'll talk about that a bit later on in the video. For now though, for now though, I want you to keep your eyes on that breakout pullback zone. We talked about this last week at 4841 half on the S&P. We're going to come back and talk about that 41 half level in a moment. Over in the Nasdaq. Nasdaq is bullish into a trading range. And of course, we have this big, strong rotation off the high. Ranges act like magnets. So we know that buyers are probably looking for a way to run this back up into that trading range. But that was a very strong run lower here this afternoon. We're probably going to get some two-sided trading the next couple days. We got some big earnings tomorrow night. We got non-farms on Friday. So looking for some ranges on the NASDAQ. And boy, I've got a great game plan for that as well. We'll talk about that in more detail as we go deeper into the video. So lots of trades we'll talk about tonight. I think some great opportunities on both the S&P and the NASDAQ. Before we dive in, though, and talk about why I said earlier to pay attention to that level there and that big candle, before we jump into the details on that, though, let's double check our schedule for tomorrow. There's really two things I'm watching for tomorrow. One, of course, is that ISM manufacturing index at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Remember, anytime we have news at 10 a.m. Eastern time, you want to be paying attention. That's a big number for us tomorrow. The biggest news tomorrow, though, you know this already, right? Tomorrow, we have the big kahuna, right? The biggest, arguably the biggest earnings of the month here so far. Uh, a couple companies you may have heard of, Apple, Amazon, Meta, that will really be the climax uh, outside of NVIDIA. We'll hear from late in the month of February. That is the climax of the earnings season. We saw some big misses out of Microsoft and Google on Tuesday night. And so, of course, tomorrow night, it's a big variable. I would be very careful tomorrow afternoon as we go into the close. So just be aware of that big variable that big catalyst tomorrow afternoon. So 10 o'clock Eastern time, we'll be in our trade room tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time, get our charts all prepped up and we'll trade the reaction to the ISM number at 10 o'clock tomorrow and we'll, we'll buckle up and get ready for that, that earnings report coming out tomorrow after the close. We'll come back tomorrow night and talk more about the earnings report tomorrow night and get ready for non-farm Friday. But first, let's get back to our charts though. We all want to know when the news is. We know the money is made on the charts. Let's now go to my favorite trades here for tomorrow. We'll start off on the S&P and the SPY, and we'll grab the NASDAQ triple Qs to finish it up here right now. As I mentioned in the introduction, we're bullish overall right now on the S&P. We're sitting at some really, I mean, really some really nice support levels. Got a beautiful channel down here at a swing low, pendulum swing area there. Seems like a great spot to be a buyer. But I'll tell you, there's, a, there's, there's one very, very big clue on that chart that moved down there's something very very important about it and let's talk about that breakout pullback zone all right let's go to more details on this i don't leave you guys hanging any longer let's drill down to our tick charts now 
This is a 7,000 tick chart. You'll see all the time frames listed in the upper left-hand corner. I trade off a tick chart in our trade room. We don't use 60-minute tar charts to trade off in our trade room. And in case you're watching for the first time right now, this is the 21 EMA. It is by far the most important indicator we use every day to find, boy, lots of ways to find, to use that to find winning trades. Now, going into the tick charts right now, there is a very Big, big move down this afternoon in the wake of that FOMC announcement. Anytime I see a big move in one direction, there are two specific scenarios that I look for the following day. One of them I think is the easiest. I'm going to cover that a bit later on the NASDAQ. So if you like making money, if you want to learn more about the stuff, I'll make it worth your while sticking around for the NASDAQ tonight. But first, did you hear what Powell said today? Right? Did you hear what he said today? Powell said everything was going fine around that FOMC until what did he say? He said no rate cut in the month of March. And what happened? The market just tanked. You know, you knew that was kind of the reason why the marks were ripping higher the past few weeks because everybody thought we were going to get rate cuts in March. I personally thought we'd probably get some rate cuts in March as well. Well, it turns out Powell disagrees on that. And he threw some big cold water on that fire. Now, why is that important? Why is that important? Well, because anytime we see a strong spike off of a news event like that. We call these news spikes. What you could do is, we take that news spike, we double it down, and we create a measured move with it, right? Measured moves, we talk a lot about measured moves in our free trading classes, right? Measured moves are useful in a lot of ways. One very consistent way to use measured moves is to measure a news spike. So as you can see now, look where that news spike puts us. Look where that news spike puts us. Oh, there it is right there. There's that 60 minute breakout pullback zone. There's that 41 and a quarter area. So we're very bearish right now. This pretty much tells us though, if we if this market continues to drag lower into earnings tomorrow, it definitely could. It definitely could, right? No reason why it couldn't keep going lower. We now know how far this thing will probably end up going, right? Complete that new spike and again, it puts us right into that breakout pullback zone on the 60. So put these two things together. What was that first? What was that first scenario off a big strong move going down? We talked about two different ways to trade it. The first one, we talked about this a lot already this week. It's a two-legged pullback and a retest of that low. And because of that overall bullishness we saw on the 60 minute, potentially a double bottom off of that low. Now, if we play our cards right, if we get the right signal, we can buy off of that off that low during the pullback. We can sell that breakout pullback of that range. I'd love to buy that double bottom reversal. And there's always going to be some, some bear traps on the way back up to take out that high. So four different ways in which we can trade a two-legged pullback after a big move down like we're seeing here. Now, as I go into this, be aware, we may keep on rolling lower here into this area. In fact, if we go into that area, this game plan works even better. Don't be afraid. If it keeps on grinding down, here overnight, right in the wake of the FOMC announcement, and again, ahead of those big tech earnings tomorrow afternoon, it really won't change any of this game plan. Now, at this point, we've made a really big, big move down. It's safe to assume that sellers are probably not going to want to sell short after such a big, big move down. Again, I do realize we may keep on grinding down into the area. What I'd like to do, though, is I'd like to try to trap in some of those sellers and use their stops to fuel this pullback off of that low. What I'll do is I'm going to look to buy a bear trap during that pullback. Right? Remember, we're expecting a two-legged pullback, right? One leg and two leg, and then retest that low because of all that strength going lower for the bears. Now, look how this pattern sets up. It's a higher high in price and a little move right below that prior swing. Now, in our free video classes, we talk about the entry signals on these. Strong green candle closing firmly above that 20 one. EMA. Now, I'd love to do is I'd love to get all the way into the underbelly of that trading range. Remember, ranges love to break out, pull back. They love to break out, pull back, and then take another leg going lower here. So as we start to get up around that breakout pullback area, the underbelly of that previous kind of FOMC range, if you want to call it. Now, once it starts running higher now, now let's see if we can get some buyers chasing it. Now, I know we're overall bullish, but we have this really strong move down. So we 
have to expect we're going to pull back, right, and roll back down to retest that low. This is a great place now where we can go out and look for what I call a failure pattern, a one a two, a two try failure. Now think about this. We see buyers come in, they try to buy that pullback, they try once, they try twice. I'm not gonna pick that top. I'm not a big fan of picking tops and bottoms. What I'll do is, I'm gonna think about it. if I was a buyer, where would my stops be? Where would my pain be? I'm gonna use that pain, use those stops to fuel that move back down to retest that low, right? Now we've got the retest of that low. Now think about this for a second. If I sell short, if I sell short off that top, where's my profit target? Probably gonna be back to retest that low. So is it safe to say that sellers who sold high, they become buyers down around that low? Yeah, right? Sellers will buy their way out at that position. Buyers will come in because again, we're now in that key support level we mentioned a few moments ago. And now, remember, this could easily keep going lower. I'm not in the business of picking bottoms on this. What I'd rather do is, is now use that 21 EMA and as we start pulling back let's get some rookies committing down here right these are not going to be professional professionals are not going to sell right into that low right not in these key areas of support in an overall bull market but if I can get the bears the rookie bears try once try twice again think about where their stops are think about where their pain is and buy right into those stops now these can be some really explosive reversals off that low we know where the market wants to go. It wants to take out that high. And the way that we buy it on the way back to that high is always with what we call a bear trap. I'm running out of space here on this, on this chart right now. We call these bear traps. It's a higher high in price. Just look over here. It's a higher high in price. It's a move right below that prior swing. Nice strong signal candle and that'll get you in. All right. So again, a big, big move down, big move down. You can see whenever we see a big move like this in one direction, it's a two legged pullback, a retest of that low. And as you can see here, I'm looking for bear traps during the pullback. Look for a two try failure pattern to short those stops for the buyers. And then once we retest, that low it's a two try failure pattern and always 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 bear traps always bear traps on the way back to take out that high that scenario i'm looking for tomorrow and i know that most of you guys know this already we cover a lot of this on these videos we teach this stuff of course in our free video classes but listen if you're here for the first time right now and you're watching right now this might be a brand new language none of this might make any, sp any sense what are traps what are failures how to use the moving Average. Oh, don't you worry. Don't you worry. I have a fantastic free video class for you that will teach you everything I'm talking about in this video right now. I'll put a link up top there upper right hand corner grab that link that popped up there and take that free trading course because the strategy I teach in that video series will show you a stupidly simple trick we use in our members trade room each morning to know exactly where the best trades are going to be that day then once we know where to look for the winners we then time the perfect entries with four of our favorite price action entry patterns guys if you're not making consistent money right now if you're missing too many good trades if you're struggling to qualify qualify for a funded account right now, hit that link, take that free course. It is perfect for someone trying to make the jump into full-time trading. It can be an easy roadmap to follow, the same roadmap we use every morning in our members trade room. And also be aware too, if you can't grab that link down there, I'll put all the important links tonight in the description of the YouTube video. Uh, my free class links will be down there. We trade together every morning in our trade room, eight o'clock Eastern time. I'll put the trade room membership links in the description. And also to them on Twitter, I post a lot on Twitter during the day. If you're on Twitter, put my handle down there for you as well. Give me a follow. I'll see you on X, right? Formerly Twitter in the description there. All right. Now we know a big, strong move down. We know looking for that bear trap, that two-legged pullback, trap those bulls in, right? Run back down and bounce, right? Bounce off of that low. But here's one more question though. And then we'll talk about that second scenario I mentioned on the NASDAQ because that's a big one for tomorrow. And if, if we're lucky, we're going to get that scenario tomorrow on both of these markets. But here's a question though. You know, we're overall bullish, right? We're overall bullish is there a chance is there a chance this thing just evaporates and rips and runs higher you know there's possibility for that right you know there's possibility was over look, look, look at this look at the 60 minute chart right you know we might get a v bar
bottom again. Doesn't seem very likely for tomorrow. It seems more likely for a retest and then back up again. But what if this thing V bottoms, right? It wouldn't be the first time. It wouldn't be the first time it V bottomed and ripped, right? How would that look? How would you trade something? like that. Oh, I'm glad you asked. This is where the pop and grind comes in handy. The pop and what? The pop and grind. If we pop up, but instead of getting, instead of the buyers coming in and trying once, trying twice, and giving us that short we mentioned a few moments ago, if this thing pops up and begins to separate off the moving average and grind, grind, grind like that, if it pops up and grinds higher like that, well, that's pretty much a sign these bears are done, at least for now. What we'll do now is, is we don't chase it. Okay, whatever you do, do not chase a grinding market in any scenario. Do this instead. Mark a trend line off the high, bring it down off that low, and then look left. Look left, and you want to find some prior swings. What you want to do is you want to find a prior swing, ideally, that lines up right around the low of that channel. These are almost guaranteed winners. These are very, very effective trades. So it pops up and grinds going higher. Draw that trailing off the highs. Bring it down off that low, and then look left and find those prior swing lows. And this could be any of the entry patterns we, we teach in the in the free video course. It could be a bear trap. Let me show you right here. The bears may come in, get short off that 21 moving average we use a failure pattern into pullback combination right again this will all make a lot more sense once you get through the free video classes so trap failure pullback strength trade all part of the price action cycle right this should make sense if you guys have gone through the free videos now one really cool thing about pop and grinds is the size of that pop the pop is the first leg pop is the first leg and the first leg is always the measuring leg so once i see that pop going higher well actually once i see this grinding going higher then we know we pop and grind what i'll do is i'm gonna, I'm gonna measure the size of that pop leg i'm gonna pin it right at that low and then that will give us now a target overhead you know we talk about this a lot in our trading if you want to make more money, don't trade more often, okay? Don't trade more frequently. Get better at holding on to your winners. It's a great way to do that is knowing how to measure that final, final target and leave that runner for that run. So in, in case all hell breaks loose in the market, right, kind of goes, goes, bam, right, and rips back up again, that's the game plan if it goes. What is what we're hoping for, though, tomorrow? What If there is a trading god uh, looking down on us here for tonight, there's one more scenario I want to go over that in all reality would probably be the easiest way to make money tomorrow. Let's talk about that now in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's feeling a bit lonely over here. Let's grab the NQ. Now, the NQ, of course, is leading to some big earnings tomorrow afternoon, which is why I'm a little bit thinking this, this we, we may start going range bound here for tomorrow. Big move up into that trading range. And again, when you when you take my free video classes, you know that we can take the amount above the range, project below the range, that creates key support. We also know whenever we break out of a trading range, we like to come all the way back into that breakout pullback zone, which is basically that whole area right there, just like on the S&P. The buyers, the buyers are, are likely going to try to run this thing back up into that range. We are an overall bull market and it wasn't like Jay Powell said he wasn't going to cut rates this year. He just said it wasn't going to be in the month of March. The problem is, is this move right there is really, really strong. And whenever we see a real strong break out of a trading range, again, we oftentimes see the edges of that range, that as resistance, this as support. And oftentimes in these scenarios, we wind up going a bit sideways, right? Kind of bouncing around, buyers buying off support below, bears, of course, selling off resistance above. And we oftentimes start chopping around sideways until we get this one type of setup. Let's talk about that one type of setup. I've been, I've been keeping you guys waiting too long. All right, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Now, first of all, on the NASDAQ, there's a, a few more details here on the NQ we didn't have on the, on the S&P. The first thing is we are still in this huge, I mean, look at the size of that move, right? The size of that move down. So we're still in this very, very big move down. We have to think that sellers are probably not going to want to sell low, even though they may keep going down to uh -huh, that new spike I mentioned before. So again, we're anticipating that, that two-legged pullback, that run up, that retest of that low, and that double bottom once again. We're anticipating that same 
that same thing right over uh, and over again. So that's definitely that's definitely one big clue on this. You'll also notice too the Nasdaq has this beautiful trading range, which is basically what the FOMC kind of set up into, right? Big run down, chopping around a range. We go up and we've rotated all the way down. You can see for yourself, right? The amount we go above that range, we're right, I'm almost almost dead on, right? Where that pendulum swing is at this point. That of course is a key area of support right now. And of course, again. Jay Powell, Jay Powell says, not going to happen when it comes to rate cuts in March, which I, I'm not sure how much I believe him because a month ago he was so adamant about higher forever and then all of a sudden it was rate cuts. So we'll see if he actually sticks to his guns on that. This could be nothing but some political shenanigans before March. Anyways, I, I digress. That measured move puts you right there and look where we are again. We're right around that breakout pullback zone off that off that 60 minute. So the same game plan that we talked about on the S&P can easily be overlaid on the NASDAQ, right? That two-legged pullback, trap those buyers in, retest that low, double bottom as we go. Also, also, if it pops up and begins to grind, right? That same grinder I talked about earlier on the S&P, all right? Now let's talk about my favorite way to trade, and that, of course, is a range ball market. The second way the markets like to move after a really big move, right? Sometimes what happens is, Marks make these huge moves and nobody dares to buy it, but nobody takes their profit and we start chopping around, right, going going sideways, right? This happens a lot after a really big move. I mean, look what happened here, right? A really big move going up and they start chopping around, right, going sideways. So big, big moves oftentimes go sideways because the market is kind of paralyzed, if you will, right, at that point. So let's talk about this. Ranges are my favorite way to trade. And when you have a big move down like this in a bear market, my favorite way to do this, let's go back real quickly here, make this green, make it look good for you guys for waiting all this time to get at this stuff here, okay? So what do we know about ranges? We know that ranges act like magnets, right? They're magnets, basically. We also know that ranges love to rotate, right? They love to rotate. They rotate the amount above, the amount below, right? They love to rotate back and forth from top to bottom. Now think about this. We're an overall overall bull market with a very strong move down. And if we go a little bit lower, a little bit lower, we run right into what? Really big time support levels on the 60 minute. If you're a student of mine, you probably know what I'm going to say right now. I would love, I would love, please, please, please. This is what I want for tomorrow. I would love to go lower. I would love to get some bears coming in and get that same bear trap. One, Two, right? Light those stops up and squeeze this thing back up. These types of these types of range fake out breakouts, they tend to light these reversals on fire. In fact, oftentimes when you see a big, big uptrend and a strong, strong down move and it goes sideways, it's it's oftentimes it's that little, and you know this if you experience, it's oftentimes that little head fake right below and then Bam, right? It just rips everyone's heads off, right? And runs back up. That is the scenario I would love to get here for tomorrow. We'll see if we can get it. We'll see if we can get it. Now, real quickly here, if I can get those bears once, bears twice, again, we're going to use their stops, right? To fuel that roll, that roll back higher. Now, this is where the fun starts. The first target on these almost always goes at the other side of that trading range. But now, remember, ranges like to rotate, right? So we oftentimes will get that pendulum off the low, that pendulum, that pendulum off the high, and that creates that target on the opposite side, right? So as you can see, that can create a very easy bear trap below it off support, right? And then again, targets off the side of that range, leave that runner on the pendulum swing on the opposite side. Now, this may this may end up just squeezing and grinding, right? Rips and just grinds. If it grinds like that, what do you do? You know this, right? You go off the highs like that, you're off that low like that, right? And you buy that what? That first pullback, right? That's the way you trade that grinder, all right? Make sense, okay? That's one way I'm gonna trade this. Now, here's, here's another way to look at this, all right? Ranges love to rotate. That's the bear trap going below. If we do end up, and guys, I have no idea where this range will be. It could be all the way down here. I don't know. All right, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball on this. All I know is, as after a big move, we almost always see two-legged pullbacks, retest the low, or a range. Now, 
what you know, what's going to be careful with here is if we get that range right and we go up right and we go up like this start thinking about key areas of resistance right go in now grab that moving average for you know wait for the moving average to come in remember let those buyers let those buyers try a couple times up here and use their stops right to fuel that move back down into that trading range all right in this case there'll be a channel coming down right stuff like that right remember in the free video class we talk about you want to combine these entry patterns with some additional level of resistance up overhead i unfortunately can't give you everything on these videos but hopefully that will go that'll be enough to kind of get you going for tomorrow and we'll do this together tomorrow obviously in our in our trade room so bearish into a range here pop it up get those buyers to commit remember it's a really really big move down right so very very high odds of a pop-up and a move back down all right so as we go higher we're not going to buy that and we're certainly not going to pick that top because for all i know we're going to pop up and keep on going higher all right but if we can get this thing up into some key areas of resistance if we can get this thing to trap in those buyers i've used stops to fuel this move going back down again now remember ranges love to rotate so we take a little bit off at that low always right always other side of that range we measure our pendulum swing and this would be fantastic too, right? Use that pendulum swing now to take your final profit there. And then what do you do? You, you know what to do now on that one, right? Moving average comes down. And again, this could keep on going a little bit further. We got that Powell, right? New spike measured move down there. But the idea is very simple, right? The idea is very simple. When it takes out that low now, we're not going to sell down here, right? We're not we're not an overall bear market, not yet at least, right? Let's, let's see how we look at the end of the week here this week. We may be by next week. We'll see but now get those bears once get those bears twice get that bear trap right and squeeze that sucker right back in all right so trading that rotation if you're with us in the trade room you know whenever i see a range day or, or range in front of us i always get pretty excited because they're pretty they're pretty easy uh to trade right so buy low sell high use those again use those bear traps below the lows, use the bull traps above the highs. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, that is exactly why I wanted to take that free video course to learn the terminology, see some examples. I have I have a lot of examples of these uh, inside of that free video course. All right, guys? So that is the second scenario that we're watching here for tomorrow. Now the game plan is all set. Now we're ready to go. Now we know how to trade a two-legged pullback right? Double bottom reversal. And we know to trade ranges if we end up going sideways. Now all we need is a good night's sleep. Come back tomorrow and we'll do it together tomorrow morning in our trade room. Speaking of the morning trade room, I can't think of any better way to learn to trade than to come out and do it with us. Trade along with me. Every morning we open up 8 o'clock Eastern time and we'll trade this stuff together. There's a lot of stuff to learn in trading. If you want to take your trade to the next level tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, I will see you there with me. I'll put all the... I'll put all the important links we discussed tonight in the description of the video, my free class links. I would definitely start there. Uh, begin with the free course first. Learn the fundamentals. You kind of get momentum at your back. And sometime soon, I'll probably see you trading with us in our morning trade room. I'll put my Twitter feed down there, my trade room links down there. So all the description stuff is there for you. Um, how about questions? Uh, any concerns? Any error messages on getting access to our free video classes? If you're in trouble about anything, don't be don't be a stranger. You can always email, use Skype, call the office, right? Use live chat. We're always here so pick up the phone call us or use live chat if you got any questions or having trouble with anything along the way All right guys boy been a great week so far hope you guys made some money today we got some more coming tomorrow though hopefully i'll see you tomorrow morning eight o'clock eastern time in our trade room if not you better come back tomorrow night we'll talk about the reaction to the big earnings tomorrow night and we'll get ready for we have non-farm payrolls on friday another big news report on friday so we're not done yet we're not done yet we'll see you guys same time same place tomorrow in the meantime be well be nice to each other out there and you better be here next time adios amigos bye-bye for now